Foods swim a lot slower if you're giving someone a piggyback ride, right? Well, similarly, proteins will travel a lot slower through a gel if they have another protein bound to them. We could normally, if we run like an SDS page, we're denaturing the protein, so those interactions would, the proteins would come apart from each other. But if we run a native page gel, we keep those protein complexes together, and then we can use things like Western blot or mass spec to actually see if the proteins are interacting. We can do something similar to see if they are interacting with DNA or RNA um, in a technique called an EMSA. These techniques all rely on keeping those proteins not not unfolded, so keeping them natured and not denaturing them. So let's get into some details. Gel electrophoresis is one of the most fundamental techniques in biochemistry and molecular biology. How it works is that you take molecules, um, so these can be nucleic acids, DNA or RNA, or they can be proteins, um, and what you do is you send them traveling through a gel mesh um, using electricity, the electrophoresis part of things, electrophoresis moving. Um, and so these molecules are going to move through the gel, um, attracted to the positive charge that we put at the end, um, but they're going to get slowed down because they're traveling through a mesh. Like, traveling through jello would be really hard, right? For the molecule's point of view, it's kind of like if they were a jump rope and they were traveling through a sea of basketball hoops. The bigger they are, the longer they are, the more they're going to get tangled up and the slower they're going to travel through the gel. So when you get them to stop, when you, by turning off the energy and getting rid of that charge gradient that's getting them to move, well, then the bigger pieces are going to be higher up than the smaller pieces. And voila, you've separated the molecules by size, and then you can compare them to like ladders, and you can see how big they are relative. Um, my ladder is just like a mix of proteins of known size. Um, and so you can do that. You can see how pure things are by how many bands each of these bands is going to be like a different protein. So there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can do. But you typically do what we're often doing with proteins is we're doing this technique called SDS page. This relies on actually unfolding the proteins and coating them with this detergent or this artificial soap called SDS, sodium dodecyl sulfate. You can see based on this molecule, it's got this long hydrophobic, so like all greasy tail, and this hydrophilic and ionic, so negatively charged water love to the head. Um, and so what's going to happen is that if you have the protein coated in this, it's going to give the protein a negative charge. And it's also going to um, keep the protein, un unfold the protein and keep it that way. So typically we use some heat and we add the SDS and this gets the protein to unfold. And then the SDS like globs all over it because normally proteins fold up so that they have the parts that don't like water or that water doesn't like so that they have those parts in the inside side, when you unfold the protein, you want to coat those hydrophobic parts with the hydrophobic parts of this detergent, and then these hydrophilic parts, the water love parts, are going to be out and allow this protein to then stay soluble. So it's soluble, but it's unfolded, and it's negatively charged. We'll get more into this issue later in that we have to have our molecules be negatively charged in order for them to move through JJL. And so thankfully for us, just remember for now that proteins are often, they have a slightly um, negative charge at the pH that we'll be using for these gels. And so we don't need to worry too much about if we do a native page where we don't have the detergent um, so that they don't unfold, that they'll still probably have a negative charge. But there are things that we could do like blue native page in order if our proteins don't have a negative charge already. Um, but one of the key things, too, is not just the charge from the SDS, but the fact that it's, you know, turning them, that it's unfolding these proteins and keeping them unfolded and soluble so that they can, like, slither through the gel. What would happen if you didn't unfold the proteins was that they would be influenced by their shape and their charge as well um, as just their length. So, when we unfold, because proteins can have these different shapes, proteins have these beautiful shapes. And if SDS page, we destroy those shapes, we denature the proteins, we unfold them. And so instead of being these beautiful folded up proteins with all these like complex structures, they're just long chains of amino acids, so long chains of protein letters. Um, and then the SDS is kind of just to, like normalize everything, um, hide any natural charge, make it all negative charge, and then give them all a fair shot as they swim through the gel so that you're really separating based on their length rather than separating based on any other properties.
Okay. So, but when you unfold them, you're also losing information about them. You're losing information about their shape for one thing and about whether they might be hanging out with other proteins. So if you have a complex, say, where multiple proteins bound together, well, if you denature them all, you're going to make them come apart. And so if you were to run a normal, if you were to have this complex where you have these three proteins and you were to run an SDS page gel, what would happen is that you would end up with a band for each of your proteins. So I guess I have four proteins in this example here. So you'd end up with this four with four bands in your gel. Um, and so we have to stain the gels in order to actually see the proteins. So we can do is like a Comaxi stain after we run the gel. So we let them swim through, we stop the energy, we stain them with a stain that binds all proteins. Keep in mind Comaxi because that's gonna come in play later when we talk about blue native page. Um, and so you would get these different bands. But what if you wanna see if these proteins are actually interacting? Well, if they were interacting, you would get like a, something that looked like it was a giant protein. Um, but you wouldn't see that if you were in a normal FDS page. If you ran a native page, however, well, now you can see that because these proteins are going to stick together um, as long as your conditions of your gel are, aren't too harsh or anything. Um, and so if this is a stable complex, then you'll be able to see this bigger band corresponding to all of them. And then other proteins that aren't related will be separate. Oh yeah, sorry, in this example, that's why I had four things. I knew there was a reason, um, was because this one was not involved, but you wouldn't be able to tell that based on a normal SDS page. So you don't know which of these are interacting and which are not. Here you can tell which are interacting and which are not. Well, kind of. With this, basically you can see that there's this larger band, but you don't know the identity of the band. Um, so there are other things that you could do um, often, what, after running a normal native page, you run a second dimension if you want to separate things out further. This, you kind of take a slice of the, the lane that has the complex, and then you like turn it on its side, and you run it again um, on a gel. And this is going to separate things in a second direction. You can also use things like isoelectric focusing to separate things based on their charge. Um, this separating it out is going to be helpful if you want to then like further analyze what's in there. Um, and you can also do things directly on the first dimension other than the second dimension, depending on how clean your sample was to begin with. But you can to find out the identity of the protein, if you have no clue, then what you can do is you can actually take these like spots or these bands, if you go to be probably be more like a spot um, than a nice clean band um, because you've lost your lanes when you switch things around. Um, but you could then use mass spectrometry where basically they take the protein out of the gel, they chop it up with um, proteases into these sort peptides and they search against a database. They, find the sequence of those peptides using mass spectrometry. So basically they take the mass and the charge and then they compare it to a known database to figure out what the peptide was. And then they map that to the various peptides coming from various proteins and they can figure out the identity of the protein. Um, if you already have an idea what the protein is, um, you can actually just do something like a Western blot to actually say, okay, is that specific protein there? Um, so Western blots work using antibodies that are specific for something that you're looking for. So you have to know what you're fishing for, but if you know what you're fishing for and you have an antibody that specifically recognizes that thing, what you can do is you can take the proteins, you can blot them onto a gel. So basically take them out of the gel and onto a membrane that you can then probe using these antibodies um, and more in Westerns and other posts. But this is going to allow you to see if a specific protein is there. You won't see what is also there, but you don't know how to test for. Um, it, but so there could be other things there that you want to detect with this method. And so that's one caveat. But if you have like a mix of proteins that you start with and then you mix them together and just see if they're interacting, that's the way. Okay, so if you can also see if proteins are interacting with DNA or RNA um, using this technique called an ENSA. So here, instead of using antibodies to detect something, you're actually having a labeled um, probe, a DNA or RNA, and then you mix it with the protein um, and you run a non-denaturing gel. So non-denaturing, we're not adding the SPS, we're not unfolding things because we want to keep the, um, the thing bound to the protein because we want to be able to tell, well, is the thing binding to the protein and how well? 
Um, so with an M cell, we can basically test the affinity. So how much a protein wants to bind to a certain DNA or a certain RNA um, by adding different levels of them and then seeing seeing the shift in the band of the DNA or RNA, because now that's, that's what we're looking for. We're, de we're detecting that. And if it's bound to the protein, it's going to be higher up as long as, um, and then what's really cool too, is that because we're doing this not denaturing, we can actually detect different stoichiometries. So if there's different numbers of proteins bound to one RNA, um, then you can actually see like a bigger shift. Um, and you can do things like a super shift or use antibodies to then like further shift it up. Um, but it, relies on having the um, having this native page. And so this is another time that native page comes into play. Um, okay, and so now let's get back to that complication about charge that I promised you we talk about. And this is actually how I got into um, this topic today because I was talking about blue native page yesterday in the context of proteins having different charges and sometimes needing to use blue native page versus native page, um, like normal native page when you're trying to run a, um, a non-denaturing gel. So basically proteins, as I mentioned, can have different charges. Some proteins are going to have negative charge naturally, and this is going to be like no issue for running them through a gel. Thankfully for a lot of people, um, like cytoplasmic proteins, so proteins that are just in the general interior of a cell tend to be slightly acidic, especially if you run your gel at a slightly more um, higher pH, um, then you'll be able to um, have your proteins be negatively charged and all's good. But what if all is not good? So especially for like membrane proteins and proteins that are in like the nucleus and hanging out with DNA or proteins that are in mitochondria with their slightly more basic conditions. Proteins under these different compartments um, and proteins in membranes that are negatively charged, um, this tend to have a, a positive charge. Um, and so these proteins would like go up out of your gel, which is not what you want. So we need to be able to give them a negative charge. Remember that for SDS page, we gave them all a negative charge, a uniform negative charge. It's not just that they're all negatively charged, but they're uniformly so. Um, so one of the things about, even if proteins do have a natural negative charge, they're still going to be influenced by it because proteins would have different natural negative charges as well as different shapes. Um, and so that would influence things. Whereas with SDS, you're basically coding any negative, any charge that they're already have and kind of like making it so that the length is directly proportional to the charge rather than the charge actually having an effect. Um, but so if proteins do have a positive charge though and you need to get them negatively charged, you don't want to use SDS if you're trying to keep the protein folded because that's going to denature the protein. It's going to mess things up. It's going to take those complexes apart. So you need something that's really gentle, but that's still going to bind to the protein and give it a negative charge. Turns out that Comassi Brilliant Blue, that same stain that we use to stain the protein gels, you can actually add it into your, into the gel, into the running buffer and things. Um, and this technique called Blue Native Page. The same reason why it binds to proteins in your gel is going to make it bind to proteins um, in this gel as well. Um, and so thankfully it's a lot, it can, um, it'll make the protein negative, but not denature it. Uh, so it'll bind more gently. Um, so you wouldn't want to always use blue native page though, because well, it's messy. And because it, the, the Kamasi can actually interfere with some complexes, but hopefully um, with your complex, it won't, won't be an issue. And therefore your complexes will stay together. One final note is that I've been talking about denaturing, uh, but there's also like, reducing. So typically when we're running a denaturing gel, it's denaturing and under reducing conditions. You can also run a gel under denaturing but non-reducing conditions or non-reducing but denaturing conditions. Um, and so what this has to do with is um, cysteine. So this amino acid cysteine, it can form these cr cross links. So when we're running an S when we're using SDS, that's going to unfold like all of the interactions between most of the interactions between the different side chains, so between the parts that stick off from the individual amino acids, it's going to break up those interactions that are just like partial interactions between partially charged parts or fully charged parts and things like that. And so those are non-covalent interactions that the SDS can kind of just like disrupt. But the SDS can't disrupt these cysteine bonds, these disulfide crosslinks. These are covalent bonds. So they're like 
like covalent bonds or where you see like a line that's a covalent bond that's like a strong bond like this isn't just going to fall apart these um cysteine can undergo make these um disulfide bonds that are covalent bonds but they're not as strong as like the other bonds that we typically think about with amino acids um, and so they can actually be reduced um like broken by reducing agents so in our cells we have like glutathione and stuff that can help make sure that this doesn't happen where we don't want it in proteins. But then like often for like extracellular proteins, they have these crosslinks to help keep them strong. Um, crosslinks can form between proteins as well as within proteins. And so that often like you have protein dimers that are bound together by these crosslinks to really help hold them in place. If we don't add a reducing agent, so we don't add like often we use like beta mercapta ethanol or um, beta BME or beta wait, beta to ethanol um, or BME. Um, we add that to the to the like the buffer that we put our samples in. And this is going to act as a uh, this is going to add a reducing agent. So typically what we do is we add like beta mercapta ethanol, um, so BME, um, we add that to our sample loading buffer. And this is going to break up those bonds so that the complexes will come apart. Um, and yeah, so if you don't, then you don't have that part. So even if you were to unfold the proteins, they would still run like they were bigger um, in your SDS page gel. But typically with SDS page, we're also adding a DNA uh, <laughs> a reducing agent, um, BME. Um, and so, yeah, so that's the basics. So if you want to keep complexes together, um, leave out that SDS. Um, and, but keep in mind that your protein might not want to go through the gel. And so then keep in mind blue native page, um, keep in mind how you're actually going to figure out what's what in the gel. So Western blot, if you're using an EMSA with the probe. Um, so yeah. So, but it's just another technique to keep in mind. And it also helps you think about why we use SDS um, normally. Um, and so, yeah, so I hope this helps.